Hi, welcome to Molly's Maths. This is the uh, first um, version of Vol Molly's Maths and it's from the 4th of January 2020. And the idea is um, the videos will help with the maths. Um, you can look at the video, maybe pause it and um, try and do the uh, questions at home and then use the video uh, to help you answer the questions. Uh, hope, hope you enjoy this. The first thing to do is really find some music that you like, put it on, because music's really good and helps with maths to have something, you know, nice to listen to while you're doing your maths. So let's start with Molly's Maths. Right, uh, first question. Have a look at the question. Question, write these numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest number. Well, if we look at the, look at the, look at the uh, figures we've got, we've got 60%, a half, 0 0.3, three, three quarters and 0.4. Now to put these in order of size is going to be difficult because they're all in different um, formats like percentage, decimal and fraction. So the first thing we've got to do is get them all into the same format. And the best choice really is to go for decimals. You could go for fractions or percentage but I, I always find that getting uh, the figures into a decimal is probably the easiest way to um, to do this. So two of them are already in decimals which is 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 so we've only got to um, do t three others. So let's look at 60%. Well 60% is, well 100% is 1 so 60% is going to be less than 1 and 60% 60, 60 is actually naught. Point six, a half, right? So if you've got hundred percent and you cut it in half, you're left with fifty percent, which is actually naught point five, and we already have naught point three, so we haven't got to do anything with that. Three quarters is basically the same as 75% uh, which if, if you divide 4 by 3 you'll end up with a, a 0.75 the last one is 0.4 already there for us so now we just got to get them in order so which is the smallest number there I think it's 0 0.3. So if I put 0 0.3 down here, smallest. Best thing to do is cross that out once you've looked at it. The next one is 0 0.4. And we'll cross that out because we've done that one as well. And then I think the next one's 0 0.5. Cross him out. And if we've got 0 0.6 or 0 0.75, well, 0 0.6 is going to be the next one. So we cross him out. And then the last one is 0 0.75. Now, the, all, the order is right, smallest to highest, but they're not quite right because the question was, they probably want them in the same format they were to start with. So the first two, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, are in the same format. 0 0.5, remember, was a half. Zero 0.6 was 60%. And 
and the last one was three quarters. 0.75 was three quarters. Now, I'll just fill in the missing ones. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. There you go. They're all in order from smallest to largest. So basically, it was just go through the steps, really. Get them all into the same format. In this case, it was decimals. Um, then put them in the order. Then just put them in the order and make sure you put the original formats down. And then that's basically good marks in the exam there. I would just practice the decimals, uh, fractions and percentage. Lots of marks will be picked up in an exam. If you can uh, practice those and get really confident at decimals, percentages and fractions. Good for getting marks in the exam. Let's move on to the next uh, question. Question two. Right, a bit of algebra here. Not everybody's favourite algebra, but it's not as complicated as it, is, as it looks. Um, have a think about it. But all you've got to do is when you've, you've got like for like, you can add them together, or take them away, or multiply them, or divide them. So here we've got 4x plus 3y minus 2x plus 5y. So all we want to do really is put the x's together and put the y's together. So let's have a look. We've got 4x and we've got 2x or minus 2x. So that would be 4x my x 4x minus 2x equals 2x and what have we got left we've just got y's left now haven't we so we've got those there together we've got 3y plus 5y so 3 and 5 8 so there we have it. We've got we've got them into the um, we've added the y's and x's. Now all we need to do right down now is the final simplification. It's going to be two x plus eight y. Not too difficult, I think. If you look at it and simplify it, go through the steps, and again. Uh, at home if you can practice algebra you will uh, get better and better at it it's just follow the rules really like for like you can put together and that will simplify it so x is together and y is together let's, uh, let's uh, now move on to the next question and we're moving on to question three Ooh, it's all about money. It's all about the money. Question three, we're looking at pounds and dollars. So if you've got one pound and it's equal to uh, 1.5 dollars, we've got to change the following. So if we've got four pounds and we want to know what that value is in dollars, we've just got to multiply that number by uh, 1.5. So four times 1.5, what's that going to equal? Or well, one for, what's, so it's basically the answer is six. Now don't forget, in the exam, they, they won't want just the, the value, they'll actually want what the six is. And in this case, it's pounds. Never forget to put in what the unit is. So, six pounds. And I've done that wrong. 
I've done that wrong. The unit, the unit actually is six dollars. So if I'd done that in the exam and put six pounds, I wouldn't have got the mark. So it's remembering what the units are. So we started off with four pounds and we wanted it in dollars, and the actual answer is six dollars. So you know, even the teacher can get it wrong. Um, so now, the next part of the question is, we've got £100 and we want that in dollars. And this isn't too bad, really. So, so basically, you've got 100 And you've got to multiply by 1.5, because that's what the uh, what exchange rate is for dollars. And what does that equal? So it's 150 dollars so there you are so that's um changing uh, pounds into dollars let's move on ah oh, now again it's the same sort of question but it's basically turning uh this time we want to turn the dollars back into pounds so if, if we've been to america on our holidays and uh, we've spent our money We've got a little bit of money left, we've come back, we want it turned back into sterling or pounds. And again, the exchange rate is one pound is equal to one point five dollars. So basically all you've got to do now is um starting off with dollars is the reverse, you divide it by one point five. So basically we've got four point five and if we divide that by 1.5, what does that equal? Well, the easiest way, if you're not too sure where your division, you can use a calculator. You've got 1.5. If we double that, that will be 3. And then if we add another 1.5 on, that will be 4.5. So how many is that? 1, 2, Three. So there's three 1.5s in 4.5. What? So what does that represent? The three, again, we're turning dollars into pounds. Three pounds. Uh, we're starting, the next one, we're starting off with $30. And it's the same principle, basically. You've got 30 and you've got to divide that by 1.5. How many 1.5s in 30? You could keep you could keep adding 1.5 here until you get to 30. Um, so the next one will be six, seven point five. Um, Nine, you could keep, and then the next one would be uh, ten point five. You could keep going. The next one would be twelve, um, thirteen point five. So that's, and the next one would be fifteen. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10's in 15, if you double 15 you get 30, so that would be 20. But you can use a calculator, so the answer would be 20. 20 what? You know what the answer is, it's 20 pounds. So after you come back from America, you've spent all your money, you've got a few dollars left, like 30, you turn it back into sterling, and there you go. You've got twenty pounds to spend at, ooh, I don't know, McDonald's or or buy some music. How's that sound? Let's move on to the next question. Question five. I looked at this, and the question was: you were given a shape, a three D shape, and it was made up of centimeter 
cubes and the shape is um the shape is here in the middle here um and then you are going to be asked to uh, um draw the elevation top elevation front elevation and side elevation and in it, in some cases um it's not easy accessible for people with um certain visual visual difficulties so i've just uh, i've just given you the answer here so the shape in the middle as you can see looks a bit like a rubik's cube with a few cubes missing and that's a 3d shape and basically if you looked at it from above it would um look like the top one here top or plan elevation and it that would be like six six cubes would be visible if you looked at it straight on if you looked from the side again it would be six cubes that you would see and if you looked at it from the other angle which is straight on you would uh, you would get um eight cubes so basically it's like a visual representation of a flat a two uh, a two d uh, two d uh, uh, vision of a, a 3D object um, can be quite tricky, but um, I hope this helps and gives you an idea of what what you're trying to look for. And again, it's something you may need to practice at home. So that concludes all the questions, apart from the mystery question that I'm going to ask you now. And the mystery question is, uh, what music you've been listening to? Is it good? Who who is the artist? Mm, who wrote the song? And who is the singer? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this maths, and I hope the music went went with it as well. And um, uh, Molly's maths, the next uh, instalment of Molly's maths will be coming to you very soon. Have a nice day and enjoy the rest of your learning. Goodbye.